Hey guys, the other video about the character controllers and making enemy AI is not ready yet. I am really sorry. I've been working on it, but it's just taking longer than I thought it was going to. So in the meantime, I made this video and I hope that you will accept it as kind of penance for not having the other one finished. Thank you guys for watching me this year. Uh, you guys have been amazing. I hope you all have a wonderful new year. I hope 2021 is just a little bit less awful. Enjoy the video. <coughs> is this thing on? Uh, da -da 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 -da. Time to wake up and actually make a video. Holy. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're just going to be making our camera follow our player. Uh, it's going to be really, really quick and simple. We don't want to do too much with it. This is what our camera does currently. We can run back and forth. We can kind of jump up this wall. And that's about it it doesn't move a lot and so if we put anything outside the domain of the camera range we're obviously not going to see it now there's a lot you can do scripting wise with this and if you guys want to investigate scripting that's fine go ahead but this video is going to purely focus on a couple of packages that you can quickly install and customize to get what you want so i built this example and we're going to take a look at this give it a second to open Right, so I built myself a little level. Uh, there's a mistake over here. I meant to fill this in. I forgot the uh, resolution. But anyway, we got ourselves a little level that I've been building. Uh, more mistake over here. I was building it in a 5-4 ratio. Oops, that's the thing. Uh, we got stuck on the edge there. Uh, so things you'll notice about the camera to begin with. Uh, when I move to the right, it doesn't move instantly. When I move, when I move around, there seems to be a little bit of a, uh, I guess what what the camera itself is going to call a dead zone so you'll notice these and then when i get a certain distance away from the center i start to, the camera starts to move the other thing you'll notice is if you look at the side of the screen uh, purely focus on my cursor over here and i start moving when i stop moving well, maybe you need to look at the player a little bit but when i stop moving my player the side of the screen keeps going this is what we call look ahead now, as I said, this is really easy to do. Uh, we just have to install a couple of things and I will show you doing that now. So we'll jump out of play mode. And the first thing we're gonna want to do is we're gonna make sure we have our main camera in our scene. Obviously we wanna be able to see what's going on in the game. And we want to make sure that we have our player. Uh, that's okay. I don't have the circle collider open. All right. That's what's going on there. So we're going to go up to window and we're going to go into package manager. This is going to take a little while to load because it's got to load a whole lot of stuff. So obviously this is not all the packages that are available. We're going to wait for more to pop up. That should be it, but there might be a little bit more. So it could take a little bit more time. So the ones that we're going to be using today, uh, we're going to scroll down to C and we're going to click on cinema machine. And we're going to just install this. And this can take a little bit of time. Uh, slower computers than mine will take obviously longer to install it. Alright, so that looks like it's been installed. Currently this is version 2.7.1. Uh, versions later on might look a little bit different. Uh, if you're wanting to install something earlier on, say from a different version of Unity, this tutorial might not work. As I said, we're still at 2019.3. So we haven't changed since then. Now, uh, we're going to install some more packages later, but I won't get into them just yet. So yeah, that's the Cinemachine 2.7.1. This should all work regardless, but it might not. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go up to our hierarchy and you can click the add button or you can right click, uh, which is also the same thing as the add button and go down to Cinemachine. So we want what's called the 2D camera, because this is a 2D game. So we're going to throw that in there. And pretty much all we've got to say about this right now is it is a very special camera that controls our main camera, but also it's got a bunch of presets. So to make this thing work, uh, to, to begin with, all you have to do is click on the CMV Cam 1. Uh, which is Cinema Machine Virtual Camera 1. And then we are going to drag our player over 
into the follow box. So this one right here. The other way you can do this is you can click on this, uh, type in player, and you'll see that our player comes up and you can click on that if you uh, have too big a monitor to drag the distance. And to get a platformer camera working, that's all you really need to do. This will follow the player around now. So if I run back and forth, uh, you'll see that the camera is following the player. And as I said before, there's a little bit, it doesn't, it, it moves straight away when I am moving the player, which is kind of annoying. Right now, we're just going to get our camera working the way I like it. And you guys can move this around uh, depending on how you enjoy your cameras in platformers. So, uh, we're jumping over to this part where it says body in the inspector. We're going to go down. And we're going to look at the options that we have. So we've got things like damping, uh, target movement, screen X and Y. This is going to look a little bit confusing and you might be a little bit worried to begin with. Don't worry too much about it. This looks very imposing and I guess all you really need to do is take a look at what's on the screen and have a play. That That is honestly the best thing to do. Uh, give yourself say 45 minutes and just work out some settings that you really enjoy because that's kind of what I did with this. I'm going to work my way up from the bottom because it is going to simplify things as soon as I click unlimited soft zone. The soft zone is this uh, blue area. So you'll see when I click it, the entire screen becomes blue area. If I was to run out of this soft zone, uh, so I could set the soft zone to really small, Let's set it all the way around our player. And as I said, you can just have a play around and see what this does. You don't really notice too much. And you might notice a little bit more if I just set it to unlimited. I think the biggest thing is the smoothing and how much the camera moves. Anyway, so... I, I don't like touching uh, the soft zones, so I just go unlimited soft zone. So next we're going to go into dead zones. Dead zones is that little area that means that the player won't, uh, the camera won't move if the player does. So we're going to set this out here and you'll see the lines on the screen start to move. This is a, I'll, I'll do a pretty extreme example for you, just so you can see what's going on. So if you remember, we had that box around our player. So when I run to the side, it takes me getting all the way over here before it moves. And then the same thing over here. It takes us running forever before the camera moves. So I don't like to have too much of that, but I also like to be able to spin around just a little bit without feeling like the entire game has to shift for me. You know, maybe I want to do a fine adjustment to a jump. I don't need my entire, like I'm lining it up with my eyes. I don't need the entire camera to move because that's going to ruin lining it up for me. So it's not very nice as a player. So I'm going to set this to about 0.15, uh, 0.15, whoops. And then I'm going to set the exact same thing to here, 0.15. And this is just going to act so that if I jump, it's going to go with me and it's going to follow because obviously I want to see what's above me. The same thing if I fall, I want to see what's below me. So I'll show you that now. And now we run a little bit further, but we can just spin around in place. Say there's a block above my head here. I can jump up onto the block and then I'll be able to see above. The next thing we're going to look at is the screen X and Y and the camera distance. You can change the camera distance and you're going to notice that not a lot is going to happen um, until you scroll right out and you see that all your art disappears and you kind of cry. And then if you go really, 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 really far, uh, nothing will happen. Effectively, what this is, is this is the layering um, of the... Oh, I've got to scroll so far to get back to 10. Um, I'm just going to set that manually. So this is the layering. I have, I think, my player set to layer 5. Uh, that's where I want him. I have my backgrounds. If I click on one really quickly, uh, let's just select this one. I have them set to negative 24. So uh, if we look at this in a three-dimensional view... Uh, if I just click on my player and press F, you'll notice that if I look at this in a 3D view, the, uh, hold on, I've got a turn here. 
the player is out in the front, and this is uh, something that you can look at. The player is out in the front, and the backgrounds are really, really far behind. Okay? This is something that we do intentionally, so that we know which parts of the scene are in front of the player, which parts are behind the player. And normally, people will use pretty big differences to determine this. Uh, this is something that I do when I am messing around with my platforms. I want them to be one layer exactly in front of my player, so that he is definitely standing on them. Uh, and so that the bottoms of his feet, if I ever have it like this, will say, sit behind grass and things like that. That's what that part of the camera does, effectively. It shows how many things to render. Uh, so obviously you can work out what these do. They will show things like where the camera, uh, how much of the player is going to be shown. So this was originally set to 0.5 in case you forgot. I'm going to set this to about 0.6. Uh, no, 0.55. I want the player to be slightly above. Uh, slightly below center on screen. I, uh, I'm i going to have a lot of probably falling in my level, but I also want a lot of jumping, and enemies will rarely be below my player as far as I'm concerned. So setting it up a little bit, I would almost consider 0.6, uh, but I do like to have my player fall a lot. Uh, that's just the way I like to design platformers in the past. So we're kind of done with that section now. Now we've got a uh, target movement, X damping, Y damping, and Z damping. That's effectively the rate that the camera will slow down. The only thing we're going to do with this section is we're going to set the Z dampening to zero because we don't move on the Z axis ever. Look ahead time was the thing I showed you where when the player moves to one, uh, moves in one direction, they move all the way and then the camera slowly comes back to center them. An example of that would be if I run all the way up here, stops and then it slowly shifts back. So we're gonna set our look ahead time to 0.3, but as I said, you can play around with this and the look ahead smoothing. I'll, I'll show you extreme examples and then we'll set it back to something that players won't notice, but they'll find comfortable, because that seems to be a good way of explaining things. You notice how he, he moves ahead and then the camera stops moving. So this is, uh, this is almost jarring to, to, to my eyes. Maybe you like this already, but I feel like this is not very well put together, not something I enjoy personally. So I'm going to set this back to some more refined stuff. So I chose the, uh, I chose 10 and 0 0.3. You might decide to go with something else, but yeah, that's what that controls. That's all we really need to do. So to fix, yeah, this part of the camera, this is how I like my player to look. We are scaled all the way out, by the way. Uh, one thing that I did want to do, uh, we have the lens ortho size. Uh, we set this to 2. Point, oh, this is default set to 2.2. I'm going to set it to 2. So it zooms in a little bit on the player. And that's all we need to do with the Cinemachine virtual camera. It automatically applies these settings to every camera. Uh, there is one thing you can do where you can transition in between cameras. You would add cameras on the uh, to the list. Uh, so you could add extra, I think they're virtual cameras actually, so you would be able to add other virtual cameras in the scene, and your main camera would move between them, and so that's how you would create different rooms, etc. Uh, in your thing, which we might go into later, but definitely not in this video. Thank you for watching again, and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye